Welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the visual system. Okay, so the point that we've got to so far is we've seen that all of the ganglion cells of the retina are going to send their axons into the optic nerve. So they're going to send them towards the optic disc and then they'll go into the optic nerve behind and they'll all run parallel in the optic nerve. We've also seen that once they arrive in the optic nerve and not beforehand, they will become myelinated. And we've discussed the fact that they are myelinated not by Schwann cells, as you might expect, but by amigodendrocytes. So really, you should view the optic nerves as an extension of the central nervous system rather than as part of the peripheral nervous system. And this is important to remember because uh, of the disease multiple sclerosis where you get an autoimmune reaction against oligodendrocytes and one of the classical first presentations of multiple sclerosis is optic neuritis, inflammation of the optic nerve where this autoimmune response is attacking the oligodendrocytes in the optic nerve and it leads to damage of the vision uh, in that eye which will use, usually um, go into remission. So usually you'll get an attack, you'll get the bad vision and then it will uh, gradually heal and vision will come back. It might not ever come back to the state that it was previously but it will heal to some extent. After all, uh, multiple sclerosis usually does begin as a relapsing, remitting disease, so you do get remission for a while. Okay, right. So, continuing on then, the next bit that we need to discuss is the optic chiasm, the crossing over of the fibres from the nasal hemiretina in the optic chiasm. So the optic chiasm then is this connection here, and I'll just colour it in this connection here between the optic nerves on the two sides of the head. So we've got the right optic nerve here and the left optic nerve here, so we're imagining we're viewing from above. So some of the axons from some of the ganglion cells are going to cross in the optic chiasm from uh, the right eye here to the left side and also from the left eye here to the right side. And it's going to be the fibres from ganglion cells that are in what are known as the nasal hemiretina portion. So we can divide the retina on both sides up into two different parts, and I'll do this now. So we can imagine putting a sagittal section down the middle of the two eyes, like so. So these dashed lines are, we're imagining, sagittal sections. And these divide the retina on both sides up into two portions. There is the nasal hemiretina. So hemiretina just means half of the retina. And of course the nasal hemiretina is the portion of the retina that is towards the nose. So this portion on the left hand side and this portion on the right hand side. So that's nasal hemiretina. And the ganglion cells from the nasal hemiretina, these are the ones whose axons are going to cross in the optic chiasm. The other portions of the retina, those are called the temporal hemiretina. Okay, because they're towards the temple. So, the temporal hemiretina. So, this bit in green, this is the left temporal hemiretina, and this bit over here, that's the right temporal hemiretina. Now, just a little bit of motivation of why the nasal hemiretinae fibres are going to cross in the optic chiasm. Think about which portions of the visual field each of these bits of the retina are actually going to see. So let's start off with uh, the left temporal hemiretina. Well, that is going to be looking at light coming from over here, i.e. in the right uh, hemi uh, visual field, the right hemi field, if you like. Okay, so it's going to be receiving visual information from the right portion of the visual field, the right hemi visual field or the right visual hemifield, that's probably the best term. Now if we think about uh, going over to the right eye now and looking at the nasal hemiretina of the right eye, can you agree that that's actually going to be receiving light from the same portion of the visual field, i.e. the right visual hemifield? Okay, so this bit and this bit are actually going to be receiving light from the same portion, and the same is true for the uh, left visual, um, sorry, the left hemiretina here and the right temporal hemiretina. This one will be seeing light coming from the uh, left um, visual hemifield and this one will also be seeing light coming from the left visual hemifield. So 
This is why we need to get information coming from each of the temporal hemi retina with the information coming from the nasal hemi retina on the contralateral side. So we want to have all the information coming from the left temporal hemi retina and the right nasal hemi retina on one side. We want to accumulate all of that information together because that is information about the left visual hemi field and we want to accumulate the information coming from the left nasal hemi retina and the right temporal hemi retina together because that's giving us information about the left visual hemi field. So that's what we're going to do with uh, the optic chiasm here and I think it might help if I just put a few little lines on here. So all of the axons coming from ganglion cells that are in the left temporal hemi retina here, those will not cross over and they will go into this portion behind which is then called the optic tract. So this is no longer called the optic nerve, this is called the optic tract. So these portions here, these are the optic nerves after the optic chiasm here uh, we then get into the optic tract. Oh and by the way you will occasionally see the optic chiasm called the optic chiasma. Um, it's rarer to see it called the optic chiasma. Optic chiasm is more commonly used, so I would advise that you use optic chiasm rather than optic chiasma, but you will occasionally see people call it the optic chiasma, and that's the same thing, it's just a different name for it. Okay, so um, all of the ganglion cells coming from the left um, temporal hemi retina here, they are going to not cross over and they will stay in the left optic tract here, whereas the fibres coming from the um, left nasal hemiretina, those will cross and they will go into the right optic tract. So this is the basic principle that we need to understand here, that information about the right hemi visual field, the right visual hemi field, sorry, um, all of that is going to be processed by the left side of the brain and information coming from the left visual hemifield, all of that's going to be processed by the right side of the brain. So we can see that um, here, this um, left he temporal hemifield here, this will be processing information about the right visual hemifield, and we can see that it's going to stay on the left side of the brain, and that's where it will be processed. Whereas we can see that the information coming from the left nasal hemiretina here, which is processing information from the left visual hemifield, that's going to cross over onto the right side of the brain, and therefore the information about the left visual hemifield is going to the right side of the brain. And that principle is going to stay true when I add on here uh, the fibres for the right eye as well. So let's start with the right nasal hemiretina. Uh, fibres coming from the right nasal hemiretina, uh, they have information about the um, right um, visual hemifield and therefore they need to cross onto the left side of the brain because that's where information about the right visual hemifield is going to be processed. So they'll cross in the optic chiasm and go into the left optic tract over here. Whereas fibres coming from the um, right temporal hemiretina, those are processing information about the left visual hemifield and therefore they need to stay on the right side of the brain so they're going to stay in the right optic tract. Okay so I hope now that the optic chiasm is clear. It's about crossing over uh, information so that we're accumulating all the information from certain parts of the visual field, the certain hemifields, uh, together basically. So all the information now about the right visual hemifield is on the left side, it's coming up in this left optic tract here, whereas all the information about the left visual hemifield, it's now on the right side of the brain and it's in this right optic tract. So the next part of this story is to see where this information is actually going to go, so we now need to follow the optic tract backwards.